So in the previous video, we actually set up the trig functions. In this one, you're actually going to start solving some of these equations uh, for missing sides of triangles and missing angles. A real quick reminder, as you set these things up, the first thing we always want to do is circle the angle. Reminder, the right angle is off limits. So don't ever circle it. That's simply because of the next step, when you start labeling the sides, you're going to label them in relation to the, the angle that you circled. That's one of the reasons. The other reason I want you to circle that angle is because the angle will go with the trig function. So once you've circled the angle and you've labeled the sides, usually we can see, oh, that's opposite and hypotenuse. So that's going to be uh, sine. There's your setup of the triangle. You start to figure out, do I use sine, do I use cosine, do I use tangent? Now, to solve for x, there's basically three things you need to realize. There's three places x can be. x can be in the numerator, x can be in the denominator, or x can be in the parentheses. So if x is in the numerator, this is a situation where you're going to multiply. Denominator, you will divide. In parentheses, you're going to use the inverse. And that right now doesn't make a lot of sense, but as we start to solve some of these, one of the things we need to remember, or we need to try to remember these, so numerator and multiply, N and M are very close in the alphabet. Denominator, divide, both start with D, and then at that point, parentheses and inverse kind of go together. And we'll play all these out in just a second. So let's look at some examples. Here's one, the, the ones that we set up yesterday. We didn't solve these for x, so in order to solve these for x, we need to go ahead now and identify. So x right here is in the numerator, which means we need to multiply. So to solve this thing, what we're going to do now is multiply 20 times the sine of 30. This is where you need your calculator, or maybe Desmos if you don't have a graphing calculator. Remember, if you're using Desmos, to make sure we're in degree mode. Same thing with your calculator if you hit the mode button. And so right here, we said we're going to do 20 times the sine of 30, and that equals 10. So we'll go back to our problem here. So x for us equals 10. Next up, we have x is in the denominator, which means that we need to divide. So this means we're going to do 10 divided by cosine of 56. Quick flip over to our calculator. 10 divided by cosine of 56 would be 17.9. One of the things as you're solving these, look carefully at what you just solved for. I just solved for the hypotenuse. That should be the longest side. And sure enough, 17 is bigger than 10. That's perfect. Look back here at number 1. The missing side was 10. Well, if I know the hypotenuse is 20, if it's supposed to be the longest side, 10 is smaller than 20, so our answer fits well. Uh, the next one, x is in the numerator, which means we multiply, so we do 12 times tangent of 43, and that means that x equals 11.2, uh, if I round to one decimal place. So um, I'll just pick a couple random problems as we kind of pick through these. Let's go down to number three. First things first, circle the angle. 20 is adjacent to that, and the x is the hypotenuse. Well, we'll remember some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. A and H goes with cosine. So we do cosine, angle goes with the trig function, 69, and then adjacent over hypotenuse. Here, x is in the denominator, so we will divide. 20 divided by cosine of 69, and that equals. 55.8. The next problem, I'll circle the angle. 43. X is going to be opposite. 12 is going to be adjacent. Notice there's nothing on the hypotenuse right here, so I'll just let it be. So with O and A, I'm a tangent. So that tells me I do tangent. The angle for us is 43. And then do opposite over adjacent. Here, X is in the numerator, which means we multiply. So 12 times the tangent. 43, and that's equal to 11.2.
Now, the next page, you start seeing that we're going to start solving for angles. Right? Same process. Circle the angles. This time I've circled X. 27 is the hypotenuse. And 13 is the opposite. So with opposite and hypotenuse, I need to use sine. But this time, X is now in the parentheses. It'll be 13 over 27. Our issue now is we need to solve for X. If we look back at a couple pages before, if X is in the parentheses, we need to do the inverse. In the calculator, if you hit the second button, before you hit sine, you end up with some, it all of a sudden will be sine to the negative one. Well, this negative one is the inverse. So what we do for this particular problem with a graphing calculator, hit second then sine, then all of a sudden you're going to get this popping up, second sine, sine inverse, make sure that little negative one is up there, and then you're just going to type in 13 over 27. And if you're in degree mode, after you do that, you should end up with 28.8. And that's a pretty legit, seems like a good angle for uh, a triangle. If you're going to use Desmos, you don't have that graphing calculator, um, if we look right here under functions, you see the inverse functions right here. So we want to do the inverse of sine, which is arc sine. And then at this point, you're going to put in your 13 over 27. And there it is, the 28.8 degrees. Let's do a couple more examples very quickly for you. So circle number two, we have opposite, we have adjacent, some old hippie, another hippie tripping on acid, so we've got O and A, which means we're looking at tangent. What is circled? X, so that goes in the parentheses. And then we do opposite over adjacent. Since X is in the parentheses, we need to do the inverse. So tangent negative 1, 27 over 8. And as we can see it on Desmos. So this time we're going to do the arc tangent. And the one that we wanted we go back and look really quickly, 27 over 8. So we'll do 27 divided by 8. So that gives me a 73.5 degree angle. So for this one, we end up with x equals 73.5 degrees. All right, make sure that I didn't copy that over, right? 73.5, yep. So one more example, circle the x. Uh, here, 32 is the hypotenuse, 10 is the adjacent, AH means we're doing cosine, so now we have the cosine of X equals adjacent over hypotenuse, X is in the parentheses, so we need to do cosine inverse, and then just 10 over 32, and so I'll just use my calculator very quickly, if you use Desmos, it'll give the answer as well, that angle should be a 71.8 degree angle. So depending upon where x is, that'll tell you whether you need to multiply, divide, or use the inverse function. But if you'll go through our checklist initially with how to set these things up, circling the angle, labeling the signs, make sure your angle goes with the trig function. Now once you set these things up, an x is going to fall into one of three places, either the numerator, denominator, or parentheses. And then from there, you can use either multiplication, division, or the inverse function.